Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, making a work holding fixture for knives on a Pearson pallet. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Pearson Work Holding, uh, it's a small company out in California that makes a variety of little uh, fixtures that are used for um, mostly for CNC machining, but you can use them even on a drill press or uh, a conventional mill. Really ingenious little systems and um, I use them extensively in making my knives. So what I'm going to be doing today is showing uh, the basically design of a fixture which I'll be doing in the first part of the video and then I'll probably do a second video where I'll show actually making the uh, fixture on my uh, Tormach CNC machine. Now obviously a lot of guys who follow my videos don't have CNC machines and may think well you know why would I be interested in this if I'm not somebody who's interested in CNC machining. Maybe you have a particular handle design that you like or uh, maybe you have uh, you just want to be able to drill holes consistently at certain locations. Uh, maybe for a handle, you want to drill, drill them at three inch intervals and nice and square every single time that you drill them. If you have to reset that up every single time on your drill press, uh, it can take lots and lots of time. There's nothing interesting or, or novel or important about it really from a craftsmanship standpoint, except that it has to be right. And so, Fixtures allow you to repeatedly do these kind of boring operations um, in a high quality way. Today's video will all be designed with the work shown in the CAD CAM program Fusion 360. If you're here for the hammer banging and flying sparks that you find in most of my videos, sorry, none of that here. The system I'm showing today may be of zero use to you in making knives in your shop, but it might spur some thinking about things that will be useful to you. The fixturing system I'm going to show today is really designed for CNC milling machines and is total overkill for a lot of knife makers. But I tell you, it could be useful even if you run a conventional mill or maybe, maybe even if you use a drill press. So it's worth a look. Anyway, the basic idea of the Pearson system is that you have a base that mounts directly onto the table of a mill. And again, in theory, you could put it on a drill vise table too, I suppose. The vise has these three precision studs or bosses that fit into mating holes on the bottom of these machinable fixture plates. These plates can then be swapped out with just a few tenths of repeatability. They're held in by these little pneumatically driven ball bearings that have an enormous amount of holding force. Now the Pearson system isn't cheap, but it's not insanely expensive either. And again, more importantly, I look at this as a jumping off point for other folks who might be thinking of ways that they want to hold knives that they're making. Anyway, the project today will be to design a fixture for a prototype liner lock folding knife that I'm working on. Here's where we're aiming to end up, a pallet that can be used to drill holes in the stock, profile the blade, rough in the bevels, and produce handle spacers and a lock bar. Pearson sells two sizes of pallets, but today we'll be using the 6x10 inch version. So I'll begin in Fusion 360 by making a rectangle, then extruding it to the dimensions of the Pearson pallet. The first part of the fixture will use Mighty Bite pit bull clamps to hold in the stock for drilling, reaming, and a couple of milling operations on the surfaces that are concentric to the pivot hole. So after extruding a pocket where two pieces of stock will be nested, I'll make a deeper pocket for these cool little Mighty Bite clamps to fit into. Next, some 832 threaded holes for the pit bull clamps to fit into. In the second video, we'll actually see the pit bulls in position on the final product, but basically they'll work like this. Then we'll drill and tap some quarter 20 holes, which will be used to secure stock for the lock bars and the handle spacers. 
A quick note, I'm just kind of roughing this stuff out for demonstration purposes in the video. Some of the dimensions I'm showing here don't match the final version, and I'm intentionally leaving out a few steps that are more or less boring to watch, but you'll get the general idea of how it works. Anyway, after repeating essentially the same steps for the spacer material, I'll make some holes for holding the stock during the contouring of the blade. They'll be held in position with shoulder bolts. Shoulder bolts are made to fairly precise dimensions and can be used to locate parts with an accuracy of a couple thousandths of an inch in a setup like this. So what I do is import the model that I'm looking to bevel here and then project the two holes onto the surface of the pallet. Then I just extrude the portion matching the shoulder bolts. One's a .187 hole and the other is a quarter inch hole. I didn't bother showing it, but after sinking these holes, I added a little threaded hole at the bottom of each shoulder bolt hole that the threads of the bolt actually anchor into. Next is the most interesting part of this fixture. It allows me to rough in the bevels. Using this approach, I still actually grind the final bevel, but it saves me some low skill roughing work so that I can concentrate on the higher skill finishing parts of the process. I'll start by drafting a five degree surface onto the front of the pallet. My bevels are ground at 5 degrees off axis, so by mounting them on the pallet 5 degrees off the axis of the spindle, I can then rough out those bevels with an end mill. Then I'll project the shoulder bolt holes just like I did on the previous part. You'll notice that the holes are now perpendicular to the angled front face and don't run true to the axis of the pallet anymore. This creates some fun milling challenges that I'll show in the next video. Then we'll create a joint so that we line up the face of the part that's actually going to be machined. And that's really about it. Again, I skipped a few steps, but here's the result. Now, it may not be completely obvious how all of this works, but when you see it actually made in the next video, I think it'll become clear how this all fits together. So I hope you enjoyed seeing why and how the fixture is designed. So in the next video, we're going to go ahead and machine it on my Tormach CNC machine. All right, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!